Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, see, today I bring, because today that history lesson, I bring this book especially, Blaming the Victim. Yeah, Blaming the Victim by William Ryan. This book, see how small it is? It's not a very big book, but not a very big book. See the subtitle? The, the subtitle, uh, the the uh, subtext. I mean, one of the people is an impassioned, often brilliant expose. Sorry, somebody did an article on this book. One of the critics say is an impassioned, often brilliant expose of middle class ideology. Now, through this book. Now you make me understand that Nigerian professionals be Nigerian problem. After the elites, after the elites, the problem we have in this country are the professionals so tied, so willing to submit to the elites. No matter what they do that is bad, willing to submit. So they don't ever point out the true disease of our society. They point out the symptoms blame the victim uh, young people are smoking too much young people, they don't cut their hair pull up your pants you don't like to walk we don't all these excuses we give to blame the victims of the atrocities of your masters we blame the victims for the atrocities of our masters because we are not brave enough to call our masters out and say oh god now you did wrong now you know that in a spoiled country. We don't want to do that. So it's important that we blame the victims. We have to turn around and blame it on the victims. The people will be saying that they are, that they are the, the victims of these wicked people will now say that are the cause of their own problem. Yes, that's what middle class people do all over the world. All over the world, it comes with capitalism. It's not the only way we have to take survive capitalism with that. If you're not brave enough to resist, if you don't get the mind to resist, if you're not brave to be a revolutionary, then you must succumb to blaming the victim. Now, this life today, now to answer this Lazarus, Pastor Lazarus, wait to be name. I don't know. Femi Lazarus. I <laughs> say uh, so African people bury European names. Fella, thank you for changing my European name to African name. I uh, say so African people bury these foreign names are so funny. I mean, imagine Femi Lazarus. I mean, what the fuck is this name, my God? <laughs> Daddy Freeze. Send me the guy ranting and I'd seen tags. You know, because normally I know we won't talk for this thing. But over one million, I mean no, no, I cannot exaggerate, but like over three hundred people tagging me under this guy's nonsense. You know, and intellectually, I am above this guy. I'm sorry to say, when they tag me, you guys have to respect what I do. Intellectually, I bring. See, may I show you now? One, two, three. I won't give this one away for free today. Today, I'll give out a free book because they don't really like it now. So, I'll give one person that wants to learn about abolition of slavery in Africa. I'll dash you this book to read this 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 book, and I will explain what this book is so that you can understand what I'm giving you. I brought this again, our holy Bible of African people, the West and the rest of us, white predators, black slavers. And the African elite, I bring this book out too for everything. Mr. Ma, we say no history. And I brought this. Are you still a slave? This one, I know we're talking about that, but I want to say this book exists. <laughs> and I want you to know that this book exists. Are you still a slave? I want you to know that this book exists. So you can go and look for it and buy it and do the test. And do the test to find out if you are still a slave. 
because 90% of now for this country you are still slaves you are you, you are slaves buy this book by shirt go and read this book it's written by one of our loveliest sister Shahrazad Ali I don't agree with many things Shahrazad Ali says she's a great big sister of all black people all over the world a great scholar I don't agree with many of the things she stands it's really her relationship man and woman advice talk I don't stand I don't believe it but this book she's on point go and buy this book and do your test so you can be to the slave or no slave behavior within your body you can see it and start removing it i also brought this one this is one of the most interesting books i've read in my life it's by Kersey graves it's called the bible of bible of 27 divine revelations a description of 27 bibles and an exposition of 2000 biblical errors in science history morals religion and general events this guy went into the bible and every single mistake he brought it out he brought it out mm -hmm. so i have the, and i'm going to read that this christianity i'm going to i'm going to make fun of you i'm going to show that your bible is a stupid book if you think that you can insult your ancestors and be a bastard child because only a bastard child insults his parents will look back at his people and the tete now bastard they behave like that so if you think you're going to be a bastard child i will bastardize your religion because many of you forget that it is my family that started this gangster shit in yoruba land we are pioneers of christianity so when all of you start to tag me and the useless person that is talking did not come outside and say don't tag this one so may they no spoil my job and by the way, with the way he was talking, I know saying that me and that the freeze they talk to. I know, but as all Christians are, it was <laughs> to say our name. Because you need <laughs> to say names. As my they call the name, so Femi Lazarus, he had no <laughs> you know, that thing that makes you a man, that gives you bass in your voice to say the names of the people he's talking to. Say will be propagandists. That the free sent me the things. That the free says, oh, look at this guy talking to us. They don't tag me, Taya. They don't do this. They don't do that. I said that the freeze, this is your Christian brother. Now you must first answer up. If you answer up, I go answer up. <laughs> and then there's Keme. Keme will be my, will be my friend. Keme fitness. Now, now, they, now over Christianity, now, now they share the thing for him page. As the best Christian. Keme fitness of the best Christian of Nigeria that will go to heaven. You know, Calabar people, I'll start from there, are the most, you know, I feel bad for Calabar people. Because all of us go to school for Nigeria and we hear this story. So, they are made to look as the most savage people in Nigeria. Yes. Because if you believe the whole Mary Schlesser story, you must look at Calabar people with some kind of almost oh, these people are real monsters. So these are some savages. So I understand how Keme, I think he's Calabar too. Keme is a Calabar name. He's trying to show that his too is he has passed this, you know, the sacrifice to his. He said, Don't save lies. He's posting, he's happy. What we don't know is the history of ourselves. First of all, Daddy Freeze don't answer this video, and he made a very salient point. And at the point where they always think, because many people, this story, they affect many people. And people don't understand why this story, they are our education. Why is this story in our educational curriculum? Who wrote this curriculum? Let me give you an example now. 20, 100 years from now, 50 years from now, you know, okay, there are no job. Let me start small, small. There are no job. Let me finish this Calabar thing. The Calabar God, I don't forget the name of the God where they worship there. But, you know, like yin and yang. You know, you are yin and yang. The Calabar, uh, 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 what was the word I'm looking for? Deity. The deity of the Calabar people is two-faced. Two similar face, faces. Like left and right, yin and yang. One male, one female. Yeah, twins. So the Calabar God 
was one male, one female, twins, yin and yang. That was what they believed in, balance. You understand? They worship those things. They worship their twins. Their twins were their gods. Guess who came to tell them that their god is the devil? Guess who? Who, who came to tell Calabar people that what they were worshipping was devil? Europeans. It is Mary Slessors and her people are the former first people where they entered and say, you are worshipping devil. Move to. So when they turn to Christianity, the twins, when you get back to twins before, they have to take you to those gods and bless because you have brought blessings to the land. You are special in the Calabar side. In the, once you born twins, you became special than everybody else. They brought you to the gods. Then some people told them that those twins were the representation of devil, of evil. That twins were evil. So if their god was devil, that means twins became devil reincarnate. The twins went from God reincarnate, from good reincarnate, to evil reincarnate. It is the Europeans that brainwashed the Calabar people to start killing twins. So Mary Slessor cannot come and say she's the one that stopped it. It is the mothers of those twins in the land of Calabar that stopped the killing of twins in Calabar land. It is the women that fought it. Mary Slessor joined them. But they will teach you in your school, in your curriculum. Because they don't want you to think Africans ever can ever accomplish anything. That's why Fumilayo Anikula Pokuti, my grandmother, all they teach you about her is that she's the first woman to drive a car, like she's just an elite. Not that she's the woman that chased the Alake out of uh, the throne with other Egba woman, women. That she fought colonialism. That she's the woman that, the only woman in the forefront of the colonial struggle of this country to fight white people out of this country. That she's a confidant of Chamamao, the first black woman to visit China. A confidant of Nkrumah. A serious member of the uh, 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 liberation movement of Africa. They don't tell you all of that. They tell you she is a first woman to drive car. That's all you know about who Fumilayo is. Who wrote that curriculum for you? Now you go ask. Who gave you that? Who gave you that curriculum? He was talking about CMS Grammar School being the first school, the first school. That's the first indoctrination center. Not be school, be that now. Do you know the history of that place? That space where CMS Grammar School, they used to be the first slave-holding quarters in Lagos. Where did they hold slaves? I want you to understand that place where that CMS Grammar School day, it is very important in the history of European exploitation of Africa. You see, when Europeans didn't just slaves, that place was a slave-holding place. When they begin to the process to the grow cotton for America with the slaves that they take for Africa, that place became a cotton processing plant. Then when Europeans needed some clerks in their office to work, that place became CMS grammar school. To start to train you to work in their office, to work in the civil service, to work for white man to exploit your people. That's, that was how CMS grammar school started. It was first a slave holding site, then a cotton processing site, then a human processing site called CMS Grammar School to process your brain to serve white man. That is the history. So when anybody is proud of CMS, of all these fucking schools all over the place that this colonial is built, these missionary schools, what did they teach us inside? What have they taught us? What have we brought out of those schools? Look at our country. What has the school taught us? We can't even build roads. We can't build our own roads. We can't generate our own electricity. So what is the use of these colonial schools that this man is so proud of? Have the audacity to... I happy say that the fish don't teach them. I'm saying that church can go and then start propaganda. It is the church that started propaganda in this world. It is the church that came with the lies. So we as Yoruba people, Yoruba people, Igbo people, Bini people, 
waiting for our business with Mary Slesso. Did she stop killing of twins in our... Did she come and stop twins in killing of twins in Yoruba land? Why am I a Yoruba child learning about Mary Slesso and the stopping of killing of twins? What thing concern me is, am I Calabar? Why is it not only in Calabar that they are teaching it? Why are they teaching it to children in northern Nigeria, in southern Nigeria, in Ghana? Why are they teaching it to children all over this country that have nothing to do with Calabar people? Now to make you feel like say you day you be savage. Now to make you feel like say you be animal, like your ancestors were brutal, like your ancestors were savages. To misdirect your brain. The way Femi Lazarus' brain is misdirected, like when he looks at himself in the mirror, he hates to see a black man. Because there's no way you can hate your ancestors that much and like yourself. For you to hate your ancestors like that, you must hate yourself. You must hate your appearance. So you speak like that so that people will know that you are not this appearance. When they talk like that, you won't make all the world you know, say, you might be looking black, oh, but you are not a black man. That's what you are trying to say. And we understand that the failings of this country make people like you if you behave like that and still be walking scot free. Because Edward Snowden. We won't talk about young people like that. Oh, you know where America put Edward Snowden today. He has to run to Russia. Only Africans can talk about their country like this and their government still embrace them. They are still allowed to influence people's brain. America, as they tell you, say they like freedom of speech, rich. Ask them, say, where is Edward Snowden today? Where is Chelsea Manning? Where is Gary Webb? People that spoke truths that went against the state. Where is Malcolm X? Where's Martin Luther King from these so called countries that are civilized and like freedom of speech? Yeah, but only African people you can destroy, dis disparage your people anyhow. They too, they're happy because they too, they look in the mirror, they don't like what they see. Now, I have a giveaway here, and this thing now, this story, I don't, me and Daddy Freeze, and I'm happy saying learn from that our episode. Because that the free too don't talk saying that Oyibo stop slavery for Africa. And I came out. I came out and I tore that lie to shreds. And it be like say big freeze. As a true teacher, as every true teacher must, when you come in contact with superior knowledge, you must accept that oh, this thing is the truth from what I said. And I happy say instead go back today to show say. Europeans had nothing to do with the abolition of slavery in Africa. Europeans had nothing to do with the abolition of slavery in Africa. The policing way British people come police for Africa, now because they are enemy that time, if you don't understand, understand it now, America was an enemy of the British Empire that time. And America was dependent on the slave economy. After the Americans fought the British in the American colonial war to remove the, themselves, you know, because that's how Europeans will behave. They will fight, turn themselves against themselves. They fight themselves, so they are different. Who is an American? Who is a Brit? Who is an American? Who is a Brit? Who is an American? Who is a European? These are Europeans who. They moved from Europe to another land and said that they are different from their king. They fought. The Americans fought the king of England. Say they want their independence from their from themselves. Americans fought for independence from themselves in, in America. So the British were fighting America and they were trying to cripple America's economy. That's why the Brits hmm, were trying to stop the slavery, the slave trade to the Americas. You understand me? Britain won cripple America economy. That was Britain's only goal. Nothing concerned Britain with the slave trade because now they are business. It was their it was their own business. Fifty years from now, they will tell you Joe Biden stopped the war in Afghanistan. <laughs> Fifty years from now, they will tell you. I'll give you examples of this thing. 
because he talked to you. And I'll give you examples of the, all these points we make. No, let me even start closer to home. Libya. Look the way Libya be now. Libya is a mess. Why is Libya a mess? Libya is a mess because of all the mercenaries, all these extremists with weapons controlling the place. Right? Go Libya right now. Libya is a mess because there are men with guns, criminals with guns controlling Libya. Right? Who put those criminals there? Who gave them those guns? Who made those criminals? Who made them the powerful people of Libya? Who made those people for Libya the most powerful people in Libya? Who made them? It was the Americans and the Brits and the French. It was the Americans, the Brits, and the French that made these criminals that are running Libya now what they are. They gave them those guns. They put them in charge there. Ten years from now, trust me, when they want to go back to Libya for the oil proper, you send a force there to start fighting those people and say that they are fighting Libyans. Libyans have been killing Libyans. The way that they say, is it not your kings that were selling you? Who were your kings that were selling you? Who were your kings? Who put those kings? The real kings of Africa were killed and deposed by Europeans. They fought wars. There were over 400 anti-slavery anti rebellions. Over 400 fought on this continent by our kings on behalf of our people. And it was because of people like Femi Lazarus then that they lost those fights. The betrayers that went to side with the Oyibo so they, could, they can become queen, kings. Then the Oyibo put them there to continue their business. When African kings came in contact with slavery, I'll read from the West and the rest of us. I'll tell you about your people. I'll not let one stupid Europe boy. We'll be saying, I'll be a you learn on the history. That's bear parlor history. How many letters of African kings have you read, Femi Lazarus? Talking about you know history. How many letters have you read? Have you read a single African king letter? Do you own the letter of an African king before? Have you seen it? I'll read from here. Let me read a letter from a king. When he encountered slavery in his land, I'll read to you immediately what he wrote back to his counterpart. What he wrote to his counterpart in, a, in Portugal that sent the people to his land. So, let's go. By 1526, in order to save his society and his throne, Afonso, now, before I go on, let's know, this Afonso, don't Christianize, oh, he turned to a Christian. He enjoyed, he built churches everywhere. We have to really read our history so that people like this charlatan, this, he just wants to collect your, because you won't collect money from people. Because you want to steal people's sweat. Does that mean you have to come out and be blabbing lies and be insulting your ancestors? Why you would do us like this? Why must that's so some African people go go inside village because somebody sent them, they want to make some little, they won't pay on a hundred hundred thousand. They go enter village, kill your own people. Who I mean, what, what kind of is well, that education? That education where you get proud of is what has prepared you for this kind of behavior. Now you don't let you know say this behavior is okay. I'm telling you, this education you are so proud of. Let's go. By 1526, in order to save society, his throne, Afonso determined to stop the trade in slaves. He wrote to John III of Portugal, complaining that Portuguese merchants, now the letter starts, Portuguese merchants daily seize our subjects sons of the land and sons of our noblemen and vassals and our relatives they grab them and cause them to be sold and so great sir is their corruption and licentiousness that our society is being utterly depopulated we need from your kingdoms no other than priests and people to teach in schools and no other goods but wine and flour for the holy sacrament that is why we beg that is why we beg of your holy of your highness to help and assist us in this matter commanding the factors that they should send here neither merchants nor wares because this is our will that in this kingdom of congo there should there should not be any trade in slaves nor market for slaves i repeat 
your highness to help us assist to help and assist us in this matter commanding the factors that they should send here neither merchant nor wares because it is our will that in this kingdoms of congo there should not be any trade in slaves nor market for slaves So what do you mean? If in 1526, and it goes on to talk about how people like you, it goes on. I said, I love this book. It exposes everything. It shows me the historical reason that all our elites are the way they are. Because what? They are the descendants of black slavers. They are the spiritual child of white predators. The direct descendants of black slavers so i understand that's and this book make me understand them if an african king has come out the king not the highest authority in the land if the king come out and say we don't want this thing that means africans immediately we encounter the slave trade we abolish the slave trade first of, immediately immediately we abolished the slave trade We must ask ourselves how it can continue. How it take continue. How did it continue? People like you, Femi Lazarus, that's how it continued. That disobeyed their king, went behind their king back, begin the plan with Oyibo kill that king or depose that king or begin kidnap people behind that king they got powerful and rich and so they begin to control this continent till today till today these black slavers and their descendants where they work for now 20 years from now Americans will go out, go around telling the world how they stopped the war in Afghanistan. Americans will go everywhere. Hey, we stopped the war in Afghanistan. Joe Biden stopped the war in Afghanistan. Is that true? But we are alive today. We were there alive today. We see the situation. We see, we watch that war for 20 years. We know, say, Americans run away from Afghanistan due to the resistance of the Afghanistan people, due to the ferociousness of the Taliban. The fact that the Taliban refused to die, refused to give up. They fought America to a standstill. They fought them till America could fight no more. They fight America. They, now America begins to see their children returning home in caskets. Before they begin to show those caskets for news, American government tried to stop news from broadcasting the returning dead bodies. As soon as the mother starts to receive the dead bodies of their children, where Americans they see thousands of their children they return in casket, they begin Allah, we don't want war, we don't want war. The Afghanistan people ended the Afghanistan war by defeating America. But Joe Biden tells everybody we stopped the war. America left Afghanistan. America stopped the war. America never stopped any war. They lost in Afghanistan. The way they lost in Africa in the world in the, in the slave wars. I'm gonna give somebody a gift of this book. See this book? Not be say somebody there for your own poop between big. Eh, I want me kuna, I go show na thing, something for this book. Mukuna see. This will not be somebody they shout. They read from two thousand old book. One book of 2,000 years. I don't know why people go to a place where they repeat something from one book written 2,000 years ago over and over and over again. Even though this book is full of lies, I miss it. I will, I will make it a year because you try to insult African religion. So I will insult your religion very well today. I will point out the com all the comicness of your God. I will bring it. It's here. I'll give one person where I'm not going to do competition. I'll just pick one person for my followers. I'll go ask her, do you want this book? You could say yes. I'll say, come and take it. Don't ask. Don't DM me. It's not a game. It's not betting. There's no gambling. There's no try your luck. I will pick somebody. Finish. How I wish to pick the person. I mean, no. And I'll give the person this book. 
I will ask her first. I say, you won't read that. If you say yes, I will give the person this book. Or maybe Femi Lazarus should come and take this book. Maybe Femi Lazarus, if you read, I know you don't read. I know even the Bible way they preach, you have not read it cover to cover. I can bet my life. You never read that book cover to cover before. Now, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, they tell you for your theology school or your pastor will train you, they tell you, now you read that. You never read cover to cover. I bet my life. <laughs> African people abolish the slave trade. Now, this is not just some pastors shouting at the people. Let, listen, this, this thing was written now a friend of mine, a big brother, a teacher of mine also. His name is Omowale Pet M. Ru. Omowale Pet M. Ru. I call him the prof. He went to the British Parliament. Not be for some street side church marketplace noise. This is an argument presented. Look at him. Submission presented in Parliament Tuesday, 17th of January 2017. Read here. Submission presented in Parliament Tuesday, 17th. This was submitted in the British. He gave this lecture in the British Parliament. In the British Parliament. You know, if you go there, go talk nonsense. Everything here. Back with dates, facts, figures. Now this book, I take argue with Daddy Freeze. So when Daddy Freeze said, "Now nah, Wilbur Force stop slave trade," I had to correct him as my friend. I came out and I, now this book, I take argue with him that day, and I can see from his own last post that his position has changed on that statement. This was not be bare parlor discussion when they argue with yourself. This is British Parliament. Your Gawi, they talk, say they end slavery. They go take them for their parliament, say they shut up. Not be them abolish slavery. And they accept the submission as facts. It is fact. So I'll keep a copy. He dash me, oh, I have a box of this book. So Femi Lazarus, DM me if you want to learn. I'll give you a copy so you can read and teach your congregation the truth. And stop being a stupid liar. A two-bit beer parlor liar. Talking about what you don't know. The only people the British were fighting in the seas were American slavers because they were fighting America in a war. They were trying to cripple American economy, which it concerned British people. Which is that they're gonna start the whole slavery business and colonialism. Okay, as they end slavery, why they don't end colonialism? Colonialism, colonialism simply means enslaved in your own land. You understand what colonialism means by that? Slavery, but in your own land. We talk about the slave trade because they were shipping people away. Then the, the Europeans they moved to industrial society. The British were developing their industrial society they were moving away from the agricultural based society to the industrial society what did industrial society need industrial society need raw materials not cutting not farmers not uh, they don't need labor they didn't need labor they had machines now to do the labor they don't invent machines we go do the labor what did they need now raw materials where were the raw materials in africa so they brought that slavery mentality to Africa and created colonialism to enslave us in our own land. How can you say some people, the same people when they say they stopped slavery, how come they did not stop colonialism? Why was that okay? Segregation. Not being able to go to the same school that they go to. Not to be able to enter the same bus that they go to. Not to be able to enter the same restaurant that they enter. Not to be able to live in the same areas that they live in our own land. And you say those people are good? Are you that blind? Are you that full of self-hate? That you see people that treat your ancestors like that are good people? And you blame your own ancestors? That you are your king selling things. He's your king. Which your king? Which your king? I've shown you a letter from an African king. When he first met you, we saw them. All over Africa, this was happening. 
Which king? The bloodline of Africa has been destroyed, eradicated. Of Oranwe, sent on exile. Many of our kings, the Ashanti people, the Shanghai people, everybody decimated. But I mean, come on, man. You cannot be that daft. I mean, you had enough, you get enough sense to gather people to build church, rent equipment, get banned for your back, get editor to edit your video. So you cannot really be that daft. Now, as you are Lazarus, I'll talk about Jesus Christ and Lazarus. This, the holy blood, the holy grail. The holy blood, the holy grail. This book argues that Jesus Christ has cho had children. And not the only say they argue that Jesus Christ gets children. They trace the dynasty of Jesus Christ's children to France. The Merovingian dynasty. The Merovingian dynasty. Yes. They claim that Mary Magdalene was carrying Jesus Christ's baby and Jesus Christ's children were what, what were called the Holy Grail. That what that grail was not transported Egypt immediately then to France, hidden from the people that wanted to kill the children. Not only did this book argue that. In fact, for the end of the book, they met the descendants of Jesus, according to them. Me, these things don't move me here or there because Jesus Christ means nothing to me. Facts. I'm an African man. Jesus Christ don't do nothing for me. I don't get any business with them. But some people, he fascinates them. And they went through the work. And with the evidence, because you know when you do book, you have to give your sources. You have to show the work. You know, if you just write all this for back of book, you say they call notes. Those notes, now the sources, where you go check whatever thing they talk, not true. The archive, the evidence, the files, they put it in the back of the book to verify. At the end of this book, they met the man that is the descendant of Jesus Christ. They met him in Paris. They met him, he, he did the meeting for them in an empty cinema. Right? It's all in this book. And he denied being the descendant of Jesus Christ. But waiting surprised me and also the authors. We say when the man come for the meeting, he came with French secret police, secret service for protecting him. Now, if you know French government very well, you know, and you know France like I do, you have to be very secret, not be Nigeria, where anybody can just hire DSS. Anybody can just hire police escorts. For you to have police protection, secret service protection, as a French citizen, you must be in government and high up in government. And this guy was not in government. He had no business in government. He had nothing. He was just a private citizen. But in the meeting with these people, he had. So why? So for me, that one kind of said, hmm, who be this guy? True, true. No, but Europeans be crazy, fam. Europeans be crazy. I don't want to even go into that rabbit hole with them. But in this book, you know, one thing people I don't know about Christianity also, where I go tell them, I say, the, the Gospels of the book you read in the Bible, hmm? the Gospels, that you read in the Bible are not the real Gospels. Show that no. Mm -hmm. The real Gospels are called as secrets. The church edits this one because they believe say human beings no go fit understand the knowledge of the real Gospels. They are called the secret Gospels. They are hidden in the Vatican. You can Google that secret Gospels. They are all in the Vatican. They don't put them in the Bible. The Bible that you read is highly edited highly edited things were taken out things are added because they won't make they don't make you they confuse as they talk it's called the secret gospels now luckily for us uh where is that chapter the king who never ruled you know luckily for us uh <laughs> she will you get time sha you get time and they come luckily for us Somebody hid one. <laughs> Somebody hid one copy of one of these secret gospels in a wall in a monastery. Uh, one of these archaeologists found it. This is a very interesting story. I'm telling you, I, I, I don't read this thing before. Like two years ago, when my following never really plenty like that for 
Instagram. I actually read this passage live. I, I swear down. I read it live. Give me a second. Let me look for it. Uh, the king who never ruled. You know, I, I read it for everybody. It was on Christmas Day. And I titled it, The Jesus I Know. <laughs> you remember that lesson, Abby? The Jesus I Know. You know? Uh, so that, uh, hey, the priest king who never ruled, 342. So I... <laughs> <laughs> I shared it with everybody, you know, because first of all, you know, I would love to read this again. I would love, because I love this chapter in this book, you know, basically. You know, you read this book. I went back and checked in the Bible, and it's fact. You know, the four chapter Gospels of Jesus Christ, talking about Jesus Christ, uh, don't even know who they, are, who they are talking about. The four chapters are talking about four different people entirely. Now four different people. I can't see. No, now four. One high rich, one low. Yeah, now four different people. One carpenter. Uh, carpenter still day. Carpenter son. Carpenter uh -huh. uh, that's three Jesus. One was directly from the house of David. <laughs> Enough Jesus day for that Bible. You know, it's a different one. One high born child, high born noble. Another one born of a carpenter. Uh, so you know all that confusion all that confusion uh -huh. now clement it seems had received a letter from one theodore who complained of a gnostic sect the caprocrations the caprocrations appear to have been interpreting certain passages of the gospel of mark in accordance with their own principles principles that did not concur with the position of clement and theodore clement bishop clement the big christian uh, in consequence theodore apparently attacked them and reported his action to clement to clement may i say i'm well in french because he was a french man to clement in the letter found by professor smith now, Professor Smith be the snitch. We see the letter inside the wall for the old monastery. We see this gospel. We are won't read for now. The gospel was now included in the letter. This is how we know what is in the secret gospel of Mark about Jesus Christ and Lazarus. I'm not saying anything, no. I have not implied anything. I'm only going to read what is in the secret gospel of Mark. It is not shown that said it to. Eh, eh. Before I go, they carry on a blog now. Say, she will talk. Say, she, eh, eh. this is Jesus' secrets. I will lick it for you. Jesus and Lazarus. Maybe they will pay Lazarus with this. Fabi Lazarus. I, I will lick the secrets. Jesus Christ did not wake anybody from the dead. That was a part of the edit. What really happened between Jesus and Lazarus? I will reveal it here today. Then Clement replied in disciple. Clement said, you did well in silencing the unspeakable teachings of the Caprocations. That's why they silence people. They won't silence me for this country too. I can't tell people how many war I'm fighting alone. I can't tell you how many cases in court for nothing. How many police invitation left, right, and center for nothing. For just saying the truth. And everybody invites everybody standing on doing that I'm saying the truth. Trying to destroy me, trying to kill me, trying to bring me down, trying to tarnish my name. It's not easy. Anybody's talking for truth. They have been silencing us since since seven oh five BC. Uluwa maybe tongue be miaro. Tongue be Sorry. Silencing the unspeakable teachings of the Capricorns. For these are the wandering stars referred to in the prophecy who wander from the narrow road of the commandments into a boundless abyss of the carnal and bodily sins, for priding themselves in knowledge, as they say, of the deep things of Satan. They do not know that they are casting themselves away into the nether world of the darkness of falsity and boasting that they are free. They have become slaves of several desires. Such men are to be opposed in all ways and altogether. For even now, this place for this letter from this priest, you know, really stick with me. This part of this letter. For even if they should say something true, 
one who loves the truth should not even so agree with them. So pastors, bishops, they know when you are telling the truth. But it's part of their training that no matter the truth you say, if it is not aligned with their own truth, they must oppose you. They must oppose you. This has been going on. This this their bishop, Clermont, one of their most venerated bishops, saying this, that even if they should speak the truth, you should never agree with them. For not all true things are the truth. Imagine, what kind of mad saying is that? For not all true things are the truth. Nor should that truth, which merely seems true, according to human opinions, be preferred to the true truth that according to the faith. So it's what your faith tells you. So the, the truth may be that this person is a good person, you know. This man is doing a good thing. But your faith says it's against your faith. So go and kill him. You have to follow your truth of your faith. That oh, he's a sinner, so we must kill him. Follow the truth of your faith. Regardless of the truth, the real truth that this man stands for. These are the people you follow. Let me not even read. Let me just go straight to the letter, to the secret gospel of Mark. Let me just go straight. I don't want to read the man letter again. They annoy me. Because these liars, they've been lying. They've been lying for 3,000 years now. Lying. Passing down their bastard spirit to Africa to continue this lying. I'm tired of it. Now, let me read for you the secret gospel of Mark and what really happened between Jesus Christ and Lazarus. As for Mark, then, during Peter's stay in Rome, he wrote an account of the Lord's doing, not, however, declaring all of them, nor yet hinting at the secret ones, but selecting those he thought most useful for increasing the faith of those who were being instructed. But when Peter died as a martyr, so you see, even from the, the secret that they removed, even Peter knew the secret. He can read here from what I'm telling you. You understand? And this is why all these pastors molest little children. Let me just tell you. That's why all Catholic priests, that is the hidden truth. That is the hidden secret. That's why the Catholic church, all these priests cannot stop raping little boys in the bomb. Pedophiles. Nasty creatures. That's the truth of the church. The secret. I'll read it for you now. What was this secret gospel that Clement ordered his disciples to repudiate and that the Capuchins were misinterpreting? Clement answers the question by including a word-for-word -word transcription of the text in his letter. So here's the here's the word for word transcription of Bishop Clement's letter. That's what I'm saying. A man that is talking about history, shouting about history, that doesn't own any letters, even letters of his own church, should shut up and come to those that know, so they can enlighten you. Maybe you can give people the truth. Maybe your Christianity can now be a Christianity of light, push away it's a way to that the free side. Because you see me, I don't even know. I tell that if I don't know why he's trying to save Christianity. I don't know why it is up to African people. It's African people that are saving. Look at this book of Clement. All, all of us trying to save Christianity. Something used to destroy our lives. We are saving it. Trying to re-edit it. I, don't, I can never waste energy on that. I can never. You know, but you people that want to, maybe knowledge, real knowledge can help you. You know? So let me read the word-for-word -word transcription of the text in this letter. To you, therefore... I shall not hesitate to answer the question you have asked. Refuting the falsifications at the very word of the gospel. For example, after they were in the road, going up to Jerusalem, and what follows, until after three days, he shall arise. Uh -huh. So now he's telling him, that he's going to tell him what happened from when Jesus Christ met Lazarus, and the three days that it took for Lazarus to arise. The secret gospel brings the following material, word for word. And they came into Bethany, and a certain woman whose brother had died was there. And coming, she prostrated herself before Jesus and says to him, Son of David, have mercy on me. But the disciples rebuked her. And Jesus, being angered, went off with her into the garden where the tomb was. And straight away, a great cry was heard from the tomb. And let me say, even before Jesus opened the tomb, the person in the tomb was awake. A great cry was heard from inside the tomb as Jesus was approaching. This is the real gospel of Mark. 
not this rubbish you are reading in your Bible. Understand me? This is the, the real thing that happened. This is what Peter saw with his own eye, not what he wrote, what they wrote down in gospel. This is what he really saw. From the tomb, I'm going near. Jesus rolled away the stone from the door of the tomb. And straight away, going in where the youth was, he stretched forth his hand and raised him, seizing his hand. So, you know, he straight, he hold the, the guy stretching hand, Jesus stretching your hand, so the guy is not dead. The guy stretched hand, Jesus stretched hand, Jesus carried the guy up from where he lay down. Hey. The youth was, he stretched forth, so he was a youth, that means he was a young boy. As, and straight away, going in where the youth was, he stretched forth his hand and raised him, seizing his hand. But the youth, looking upon him, loved him and began to beseech him that he might be with him. And going out of the tomb, they came into the house of the youth, for he was rich. And after six days, Jesus told him what to do. And in the evening, the youth comes to him, wearing a linen cloth over his naked body. And he remained with him that night, for Jesus taught him the mystery of the kingdom of God. And thence, arising, he returned to the other side of the Jordan. For six days, this young man was going to Jesus naked, but with nothing but linen cloth on his body. And Jesus Christ was showing him the secrets of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So, Lazarus, is that what you are, Jesus Christ? <laughs> I go die, oh. Febo, <laughs> Febo, are you involved? <laughs> when Pope comes, I say they don't allow. See, listen, listen. When the when Pope come out, they tell me, I say they allow blessing of days. Shut up. See this? I hate. Afri you cannot out Pope the Pope. You cannot. This is his culture. He knows things about it that you don't know anything about. How can Pope talk something Nigerian priests? What did they rape Nigerian children up and down and not do anything? Are out talking. I brought this book out because of that Lazarus, because your name is Lazarus. And I know you don't know this story. I know you don't even know there's a secret gospel of Mark. A Greek secret gospel of Luke, a Greek secret gospel. In fact, there are 52 secret gospels. The gospel of Judas, the gospel of Mary Magdalene, the gospel, all of them had their accounts. And let me boss on our brain. None of those accounts talk about immaculate conception. None of those accounts talk about resurrection. None of those accounts talk about ascending to heaven. I swear. None of the original Gospels talk about it. All this was what was added. But this is not the point. I'm not here to tell you about Christianity. But to tell you, say, stop insulting your own ancestors and your land. Final case and point. Is this the final case and point? I don't want to miss anything where I want to talk to you. I don't want to miss anything where I want to talk. Okay, yes. Let me go final case in point. Rituals. Rituals. Which is one of the biggest weapons we Christianity and Islam they wield against African religion. Rituals. See, Africans, they use people. They serve people. They keep people for to their gods, the human beings, they just kill you for the gods. Say the gods of Africa, they just human sacrifice. Hey, you say you talk and say you go paint your face, you go paint your face with, with oh yeah, yes. Okay, that's a funny thing. Yes, it looks funny. To the, when I see people too speaking in tongues and jumping up and throwing yourself on the ground, I rather paint oil on my face. <laughs> Come on, we all have our things. We all have our madness in the name of belief. 
Yes, my word is that we paint oil, and the light is not oil we paint on our face. It's even white chalk or dust that you have to put on your head or your face. I've never seen anybody rubbing palm oil on their face. Worship your African God. That one I lie. Stop lying. It's earphone we use. Earphone or we rub dust. Is it they will do like this. We for <laughs> Eh? You know what I say? Inside is your craze. Or don't have madness. They inside. Eh? <laughs> you know what I say? Inside is your craze. Or not have madness. They inside. <laughs> I mean, we all do stupid things in the name of the thing we believe. Come on, man. Why are you trying to... When you talk about human sacrifice. Now, let me tell you. The human sacrifice. Right? Is justice. No noble man's child, no good person's child, no citizen's child can just be picked up for sacrifice. Now, people, we don't do bad things for society. They, they keep aside. One of you in the we will put them for Tubu. Those who don't do things way I know feel take. The thieves, the killers, the rapists, we keep them aside for the gods. Or the outsiders. There's no culture where their gods don't demand blood. The funny thing is that till today, Europeans still sacrifice people to the god of law. They are god of law. That woman with a close eye carry this thing like this. That's a god. You people don't know. You, things are put in plain sight. You are too stupid. They say constitution, law. But start today. Image day will represent that law. Symbol. There's a symbol that represents the law. Death penalty still exists in this world. Where Europeans are free to keep people with, the, with injection by cutting head, by hanging, by firing, spilling the blood of people in the name of the God of law every day. Till now, people are being killed in the name of the law. In the name of law, people are being killed. So Africans don't have rights to do their own sacrifice to their gods, whatever way they want. And king died, our Babaku day, or the way at, our kings were so great that people were willing to die with them. Go to China. When they found the tomb of the old China emperors, 3,000 people buried with them, willing. They said they, 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 they were not killed by. They, 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 no, you know, they said their mother, they, they died like they were peaceful. People were happy to follow their king's dead body to where it was going. That's how great African kings were. When they match their processions like this, people willingly want to die with them. Willing to die. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because till today, the fucking Europeans you worship and praise, they still demand that people are sacrificed to the God of law. And they call it death penalty because they give a name. Where sound funky for your ear. Where you wear tight suit. Inside hot sun. They sweat. Tight, tight suits. You know, see? But you accept death penalty. That one is not barbaric. Death penalty is not savage. Hey, Logman Lori, man. Hey, Legman Lori. Case closed. That's all I can say. Hey, Legman Lori, sir. Don't come and be screaming that you know history when you know nothing.